please make sure that you have your booklet, a compass, a ruler, and erasable pencil. For most of this unit, we'll be using the booklet itself, so you won't be needing your graphing notebook. All right, let's get ready to go. Let's take a moment to investigate our new booklet. So, unit two, unknown angles. We have this diagram here that involves a triangle and two parallel lines. You'll see this later on. Inside, of course, we have our geometry journal, followed by the unit two summary. This is a list of topics we're going to do, the openings or lectures we're beginning with, the Desmos activities we'll be doing, which are linked live in the PDF attached to all the assignments, all of the practices in the booklet, all the assessments except for one fluency quiz on angles with triangles will be the exit tickets. We will be ending in this unit all the way at the end with these two test questions with the rubrics attached to the next page. Let's take a look at our first topic. Our first topic is angles at a point. You may find it helpful to get a highlighter for this particular version. We're going to be looking at six different types of angle here. I'm going to be using a red, a orange pencil here to kind of illustrate them for you. The first type of angle is called a vertical angle, which is formed by two intersecting lines. Vertical angles are always congruent. That means same size, same shape. So the measure of angle A and the measure of angle B is the same. So if this is 50, this is 50. This is 50, well, this and this add up to make a full angle, so that's 180. So that would be 180 minus 50, or 130, and this would be 130 as well. Supplementary angles are two angles whose measures add to 180 degrees, or a half circle. A reflex angle is instead of doing the acute angle, we go around the long way because an angle is kind of like a rotation. So I can open up my hands 49 degrees, or I could go around the long way 311 degrees. Adjacent angles, like so, are two angles that share a common side. I'm gonna highlight that common side. They don't overlap. A linear pair, on the other hand, is a pair of supplementary angles that are also adjacent angles, meaning not only do they add to 180, they also share a common side. One way to recognize them is that the other two sides form a line like so. And then complementary angles, C, um, are two angles whose measures sum to 90 degrees, or a right angle. A right angle symbol is this little right triangle right here. So with these different definitions, we can always go ahead and take a look at a diagram and work out what are the measures of these unknown angles here. I apologize for the uh, size of the writing here. So we're going to see D and E giving the measure, and then we're going to give a reason for each one. So let's look at A. A is, well, let's see, what type of angle is this? It's not vertical. Uh, it could be supplementary because we have, uh, it's not a reflex angle. We do have adjacent angles because it does share that common side. It's a linear pair right here. Do you see how it has the same type of shape where it has a line and then two adjacent angles? And if it's a linear pair, it's two adjacent angles who sum to 180. So 145 plus A has to equal 180. So A has to be equal to, let's see, um, 35 degrees. Because they form a linear pair. Why the answer is correct is just as important as what the answer actually is. So if we then look at our next example with these two intersecting here, notice it forms that X shape, which is characteristic if I look at my different examples of the vertical angle. So that means that angles across the intersection on opposite sides of the intersection are the same. These little arcs I'm drawing show that those angles are the same. So C is 40 degrees because it's a vertical angle. And if I want to write abbreviate angle, I can write a little picture of an angle of 40 degrees. And here, if I look at this part, notice how B and C also create a linear pair. So that means if this is 40, this must be 180 minus 40, or 140 itself. And since B and D are vertical, 
it's also 140. Now, the way I logically argued is I found B by finding it as a linear pair of angle C. And then I found D by thinking about it being vertical to angle B. Notice I went from C to B to D. But technically, it could have also gone the other direction. I could have said 40 is a linear pair with D, therefore D must be 140. Therefore, B is vertical to D, and this must be 140 as well. Or I could even have said that C is a linear pair of D. Now, E is a nice one because this always makes 360 degrees. So if I take away, let's see, 117 plus 146, so 100 and 100 is 200, 10 and 10 is 50, uh, 7 and 6 is 1 less than 14 or 13, so that's 263. And I want to get up to 360. Well, from 260 to 360 is 100, and since I've already gone 3, I just need, you know, 97. So 97 degrees, because it's a reflex angle to... 260 degrees. We're going to take a look at one more example together that combines a lot of these ideas. In the figures below, A, B, C, D, and E, F are straight line segments. Find the measure of each marked angle or find the unknown labels labeled by the variables in each diagram. Give reasons for your calculations and show all the steps to your solutions. So right here in this diagram, we have the unknown angle x, and then we have another thing that's represented here as 4x minus 10. So I know the following things. I know, for example, this right angle is 90 degrees. And then if I trace the sides of this right angle, it means that this is vertical to that and must be 90 degrees as well. Um, what else do I know in this situation? I know that, I'm just going to switch colors so it's easier to see. Again, this is a great unit for highlighters. I know that this and this are vertical angles, so this must also be 4x minus 10, whatever that is. And that, if I can draw another x here, you see the green, I'm sorry if it's not particularly clear. This and this must be the same. When I study this, I begin to try and see what relationships can I notice. And I notice that right here, if this is 90 degrees and this is 180 degrees, that means 90 plus whatever measure x is plus 4x minus 10 must equal to 180. So let's see if we can solve for x. Now the reason, because I have to give a reason for my calculation, because... Let's see, if this is 90, these must be 90 because the two angles form a linear pair with 90 degrees. So then I can subtract and I can say, okay, take my 90 from both sides, so x plus 4x minus 10 equals 90. Combine like terms, 5x, well I can bring this 10 to the other side, equals 100. Therefore, x is equal to 20. Now let me see why I could do that. If I know that I can add 10 to both sides because of the addition property of equality, divide both sides by 5, again the division property of equality, giving me a result of 10. Therefore, x is equal to 20. And by substitution, the other angle is 4 times 20 minus 10, or 80 minus 10, or 70 degrees. I'm going to box both my answers to make them easier to find. We're again going to use all of these in class to continue exploring similar problems, where we're going to have an unknown, Always give reasons for your calculation, especially I want you to bring, always bring your reasons back to one of these, if not multiple. So in this example, we use linear pairs, we use vertical angles, we use complementary angles. And we're going to explore several of them, including some quite tricky ones, like these two right, these two right here. 
until we come to our exit ticket on page 11. Looking forward to doing some great math with you. Have a wonderful rest of your day.